Well, let's now bring in Kellyanne Conway, counselor to the president, as we talk about this. First off, what do you say to critics, uh, uh, Kellyanne, that say the president should be focused on the pandemic, not the unmasking and the, uh, and the 302s with Michael Flynn? Yeah, the president is focused on both. And good try, everybody. But you dragged all of us and this entire nation through nonsense for two years. The taxpayers footed the bill, $40 million. We complied with all those subpoena requests, produced over a million pages of documents, of 500 witnesses, I think, and, and on and on and on, or 500 subpoenas, and nothing was found. I think we've got more evidence here of wrongdoing than they ever had in their phony Russia collusion Mueller investigation. Folks, let's quickly review the facts. It's early January 2017. We're supposed to have a peaceful transition from the Obama administration to the Trump presidency. I'm right here in this White House on January 5th, 2017, having lunch with eight-year Obama administration veteran, senior advisor Valerie Jarrett. The same day, they're cooking up their scheme in the Oval Office. And what was our lunch about? She was very gracious and cordial. She said, President Obama wants us to help all of you who are coming into this new White House. I now have her old office. And upstairs in the Oval Office, they were cooking up a scheme that then went to Trump Tower the very next day when Comey pulls the president aside after their intelligence briefing and mentions this ridiculous dossier to him. Uh, then, everybody, House Intel report, April 2018. James Clapper subsequently acknowledged discussing the dossier with CNN journalist Jake Tapper and admitted that he might have spoken with other journalists. We know one of these unmaskers, one of these officials who asked for the unmasking, one of the 40, likely leaked to the Washington Post in or around January 13th, the same time Joe Biden himself, who wants to be your president, was requesting the unmasking. So we already have more questions than answers. And the idea that people at the Department of Justice and others cannot be looking at this while the president leads us through the global pandemic, the financial and medical crises, is ridiculous. Today in the Rose Garden, the president will be announcing vaccination update. It's going to be incredibly impressive. Do you know that the NIH started looking at vaccine development on January 11th? March 2nd, the president invited the commercial labs into the cabinet room. I was there, and his, his opening comments were, we're here to talk about therapeutics and vaccines. Just yesterday, NIH and Dr. Fauci at NIH announced that they're starting a new COVID-19 treatment, hydroxychloroquine, and, and is this mm. the, the antibiotic and drug zinc. that I can't pronounce? Yes, yeah, the z -Pak. So this is all very exciting, the development. We're going to have the military and the private sector and the health professionals working on vaccines. FDA has cut through so much red tape and regulation on President Trump's watch. Normally, what would take years to approve has been approved in the matter of weeks. That's why this is all called Operation Warp Speed. This president has been working nonstop on the global pandemic for months and months and months. And it is nonsense for people who got caught red-handed now to think that we as Americans don't have a right to know who was doing what at the top levels, right. uh, top levels of this of the Obama White House and of our government. Why weren't they trying to help us? Why not? Why wasn't Joe Biden saying, "Hey, incoming Vice President Mike Pence, let me try to help you here"? Uh, instead, they were trying to unmask Mike. Fl they were unmasking mm -hmm. uh, General Flynn, right. and then coming into our White House four days into the administration to interview him to set him up. Well, now because those documents have been. Declassified, we know that there were 23 Obama era officials who asked for the unmasking f close to 50 times. Two of those who did some requesting of unmasking and got the name unmasked, John Brennan and uh, Mr. Clapper as well, both were on TV yesterday. I want to play a soundbite for you. The first is John Brennan mm -hmm. talking a little bit about how bad it was that the Department of Justice suggested dropping the charges against Michael Flynn and Mr. Clapper talking about how routine this unmasking thing is. What's the big deal? Here are both. I think our country is in very serious trouble when you have such blatant political corruption at the highest levels of U.S. government, something I never saw, thought I would see in my lifetime. It's a routine thing. It's appropriate and legitimate. Uh, when you have a valid foreign intelligence target engaging with a U.S. person, he is, always sounds like he's... Yeah. Well, you've got, okay, again, so the Clapper, Kelly, uh, Kelly, uh, Clapper just a moment testifying ago. under oath. Yeah. Right. Let, let me ask you a question first. A moment ago, before we played the soundbite, you said uh, they were in the Oval Office cooking up the scheme. How do you know they cooked up a scheme in the Oval Office? 
because they came to Trump Tower the next day. And first of all, January 5th, 2017 ends up being a very important date. Jim Comey, the FBI director who was in the midpoint of his 10-year term as FBI director and wanted to keep his job through the Trump administration, had not made his way to Trump Tower. I mean, as Steve Harvey had been there. Shinzo Abe flew from Japan. I think um, Kanye West had popped by. Like, the whole world was coming to Trump Tower to see the president-elect all the tech companies. And Jim Comey, the FBI director, didn't come for two months, but he came on January 6th as part of the intelligence briefing. And he was tasked to then afterwards sort of pull aside President-elect Trump and mention this ridiculous dossier. Let me remind everybody, dossier, Russian dossier, a, fr a fancy French word for a load of crap. And that's exactly what it ended up being. <laughs> And, and yet, and yet, so you, you can see what's being mentioned about January 5th. The next day they go to Trump Tower. I was just discussing this with Hope Hicks recently because we're two of the only people left here who were involved in those day's events. We had gone with the president to a different briefing all the way downtown in Manhattan, got back. He had the intelligence briefing. Comey pulls this nonsense, and then they all start talking to the media. It's a look at the timeline. Instead of helping us to have a peaceful transfer, in our great, in the greatest democracy the world has ever known, they were doing this. And if they weren't, then I want to apply to them the whole standard, the same standard that was applied to all of us and President Trump during the Russia collusion nonsense. Guilty until proven innocent. Tell us you weren't cooking up the scheme. What do you have to hide? Stop insulting everybody, John Brennan, who's uh, butt hurt that you got your security clearance taken away from President Trump in the summer of 2018. And if you've got nothing to hide, then come forward and explain why Americans should not be concerned that this is what you were doing while you should have been helping us to have a peaceful transition. Look, it's, it's one thing that they didn't want Donald Trump to become the president. It's quite another, drum roll please, that all these folks and many of their enablers in the mainstream gotcha. media never expected Trump to win. They could not get over that shock. And remember, there have been other reports that people were declassifying intelligence all over town to try to pipe it out there before we got here. So I, I think people have a ton of questions. We went through two years of the Russia collusion, delusion, illusion, and it, it, and it went to nothing. So can't we just have a minute, everybody, to find out what happened here? Let the Department of Justice and others do what they're doing. Let John Durham do his work. I've never met the man. We don't even discuss that here. But I'll be a curious citizen like everybody else to see what he uncovers. Kelly, and let's talk about the Democrats' wish list for the next stimulus or relief money. They want $1,200 for everyone, and that includes certain undocumented immigrants. $3.6 billion for mail-in voting. Republicans are not in favor of that. $20 million for arts and humanity. $100 million for domestic violence prevention. Bank loans and financial services for cannabis businesses. Here's Nancy Pelosi. And we're saying, okay, here's, here's, here's our offer. Let's see where you are. Sadly, though, Leader McConnell said, we have not yet felt the urgency of acting immediately. He wants us to just pause. He wants us to just pause. But families know that hunger doesn't take a pause. Yeah, don't let a crisis go to waste, right? I mean, yes. this is supposed to be coronavirus money, and they're throwing in all this other stuff. Right. Well, she's got a problem not just with Leader McConnell and the White House. She has a problem within her own conference. You have more moderate Democratic members, at least moderate. They, re they represent moderate and Trump-Pence districts, some of them. Elisa Slotkin, Kendra Horn, they've come out in the last day or so saying that they probably will not vote for this package and calling into question what's in it and saying this is no time for partisan politics. We need, quote, bipartisan, bicameral uh, passing legislation. And so she's got a problem in her own caucus. Also, I would remind people in an 1800 page document, Nancy Pelosi and the Democrats, they mentioned China one time. They mentioned the word cannabis more than they have the word jobs or manufacturing or trade. Ladies and gentlemen, this is not about getting you back to work right. and getting you the dignity of work and helping us open up our country again as we continue to fight the virus. This is about a, a wish list that is not going to, I, I think, doesn't help her in some of these Trump-Pence districts. Some of these, uh, a lot of these members, I think, looked at the results in Wisconsin and California this, this right. week, these two special elections where the Republican candidates won, and they're getting a little nervous. They want to run with Trump Pence on the top of the ticket, not with Nancy Pelosi. She's not very popular in those districts. But I'm glad that you're shining a light on what's actually in the package. 
Um, these, she's the same person who tried to get money for Planned Parenthood, already gets a half a billion dollars in taxpayer money every year anyway, tried to make right. them an essential service. So we're watching closely, and it's not just Republicans who are against her, it's Democrats as well. Gotcha. So yesterday in the afternoon, the whistleblower, his name is Dr. Rick Bright, stood up uh, and wrote a, a detailed report how he was trying to tell everyone this pandemic is coming and you guys aren't ready. We have no masks, we have no PPE, we have no vaccine. Listen. And our population is being paralyzed by fear, stemming from a lack of a coordinated response and a dearth of accurate, clear communication about the path forward. Our window of opportunity is closing. If we fail to improve our response now, based on science, I fear the pandemic will get worse and be prolonged. Without better planning, 2020 could be the darkest winter in modern history. Kellyanne, was there a pursuit to find out who Rick Bright was talking to that was ignoring him? Was it Secretary Azar? Does he remember any interaction with Bright being ignored or anything like this? Well, Secretary Azar was talking about the pandemic uh, very early on. I was in the Oval Office when he was doing that. He um, obviously, the president took bold action based on information like that in January and saved probably millions of lives in this country, if not elsewhere, by shutting down China, travel from China. Bold action was taken early today in the Rose Garden. The president will remind everybody that the NIH, which has a job open for Dr. Bright, started developing a vaccine on January 11th. And now, just yesterday, the irony is NIH, where Dr. Bright now has a job, NIH just yesterday is waiting for him to go and be part of this exciting $1 billion testing program there. And they just announced a new study of high hydroxychloroquine and azithromycin <laughs> for a COVID-19 treatment. So I right. think his best and highest use is probably to get to his open job at NIH and get busy and trying to help us. Was also, I mean, also, I, I just am astonished that, again, anytime the media feels somebody is going to be against Donald Trump, they just live tweet them, they imbue them with credibility automatically. I'm not calling anybody's credibility to question here. I'm just saying that right. this man has 35 years or so government experience as a doctor, as a scientist. Get busy at NIH and give and help us. So, so, he, so you, what you're saying is he wasn't demoted, he was shifted, and he has misinterpreted the move? Well, I was told that he was, he's been offered a new job at NIH, and it's a pretty good job. It's $285,000 a year, and he's tasked with, I think he's, uh, I had asked Dr. Fauci early on when this happened. He said he's going to be reporting, this gentleman will be reporting to Dr. Collins, Francis Collins, the head of NIH, and there's a, quote, bold new $1 billion testing program. So if you're talking about lack of testing, lack of vaccines, lack of, get busy, help us. This is what he's, I think, devoted his gotcha. career to. And today in the Rose Garden, big announcement by the president. He'll be unveiling the two professionals who will be helping us. But this Operation Warp Speed vaccination program is so exciting. The military will be involved in helping us deploy. Obviously, the scientists, the FDA is already gotcha. has over 100 in the works. And it's just been incredibly robust to see. Right. And, and robust to see Americans benefit from cutting regulation and red tape to try to develop therapeutics and vaccines. And it's been great to watch the pharmaceutical okay. labs come together. Instead of being competitors, they've been collaborators on this. Really terrific. We will watch for that announcement in the Rose Garden later today. And of course, people will see it live here on Fox, just as they just saw Kellyanne Conway at the White House. Thank you, Kellyanne. Thank, Thank you. you. Have a great day. Bye-bye. You too.